Hey guys, welcome back. I am doing my long-awaited video about making prints today and I guess scanning and editing. I'm going to be working on this piece. I'm going to be scanning it in, doing some editing on this and another um, piece of art that so I can show you uh, how to edit kind of a white background and also dark background. This is by no means the best way of doing it, it's just how I have found out how to do it. So this is my scanner. I put in the original and I try to line it up as good as I can so that I don't have to do any aligning later on in Photoshop and then hit scan. And I usually try to save or to scan it in at about 300 to 350 dpi. That's pretty standard. And then I usually save it as a TIFF file. This might be kind of overkill. Um, I definitely don't save anything as JPEG, that's too low quality, PNG is okay. So this is my scanner. It says on here that it was 245 Canadian, but I'm pretty sure it was actually cheaper than that when I bought it. So I don't know, I don't know, maybe it was actually that much, but this has been a pretty good scanner for me. Um, it's a bit small, but it uh, does its job decently well. and. Um, it was the first thing I got, so that way I could still be selling little originals, but at least I could save them on my computer so that when I could afford to buy a printer, I would have all those files saved up that I could just print off. Um, so that way I wasn't just making something and selling it right away. But yeah, I showed some of the pricing there too in um, American and British currencies. And so here are my templates that I've made for my prints. I'm going to start with a 8.5 by 11 print and I'm just going to pop it in and so yeah there's usually some darkness on the edges there from the scanner. Uh, I wish that scanners didn't have that lip on the side but they usually do and they usually cause that little darkness. So what you can do to get rid of that is to use the clone tool. Um, what I do is I select some white off to the side and then I basically just uh, copy and paste over top of the darkness. So here it is finished and I'm just going to go to the curves and I'm going to do the white color picker and I select the white that seems I guess the lightest out of the whole piece and then that kind of just balances out some of the whites for the rest of the painting to make it kind of look better. And then I just kind of adjust it so that um, it's more in the middle. Uh, I forgot to get rid of my signature. Normally I erase that so that I can sign it with my actual hand, like a pen, instead of it being printed on. But uh, for today's sake, I just left it anyways. So yeah, I saved this out as a TIFF file as well. This is me just editing the like the file that I just scanned in so that I could have something to use for if I needed to use it for any other size print. So this is the this is the darkness around the edges that I was talking about, the kind of shadow. Um, that's why it's really good to make test prints because sometimes you can't tell that there's still a shadow and you can see at the top there. Um, there is a bit of a shadow. So aside from using the clone tool to uh, lighten up the edges and get rid of the shadow, I also use the paintbrush and I just set it to white and a low opacity. I probably do even like 20% or 30% opacity and um, I go into a new layer and just kind of skim over the edges lightly to kind of lessen the sharp contrast from like the shadow that the scanner left to the whiteness of the border. If you wanted to, you could print straight to the edges and you could avoid a lot of this, but I like leaving a bit of a border on my prints. Um, I'm not sure why, I just do. <laughs> so yeah, um, there's that. And you can also use the magic wand tool and select the white. Um, you have to set the tolerance to a very low number to make sure uh, to make sure that it doesn't select a lot of things, but still you will lose little hairs like that. Um, but you can always go through um, if 
if you're using Photoshop anyways and just like refill in the hairs or anything like that that you might lose. Um, that's just if you have a lot of time and uh, you want to really be meticulous about it. But yeah, see the background is like perfectly white now, it looks great. But uh, I lost a little bit of information on the hair, um, the hair strands, and also on the shirt. And there's little bits in between that I would have to also erase because there's not supposed to be anything there. And it looks weird because it's a little bit darker of white. But you can see on the ruffles there, um, I lost a little bit of information as well. So now I'm going to um, show you how I edit a colored file. This scan didn't end up looking a lot like the actual original. Surprisingly, a lot of times my scanner goes pretty close to what it's supposed to look like, but this one ended up looking a little bit faded and I guess not as nice. And part of it is because the paper is actually like sparkly and bronze, but also, um, I don't know, it just lost some saturation. So. This is how I edit um, colored pieces. I don't always cut off the edges of, of my pieces. I'll try and like rearrange it or rescan it, but for today, I just want to be quick. So uh, one of the easiest things to make um, a piece lighten up is to edit the levels. And usually the far right um, triangle, if you move it to the left, it will cut out a lot of the darkness and vice versa for the opposite side. And that kind of shows you sort of how it works. And I just sort of play around with all of these tools to kind of find what I think looks best, I guess. And uh, it's it's a bit meticulous. Sometimes I scan things and they just look great right away, but sometimes you have to do some editing. Um, but yeah, and then I use the clone tool on this one as well. So I I left a lot of like pencil lines behind and some of it I think looks okay but some of it could definitely get rid of and there's like little paint splatters as well here and there so I was just going around and touching that up. So yeah, you could select a different part of the paper and just um, cover it up so that it matches the rest of the paper. And also with this one, you can see I left my um, signature on the bottom right as well, so I'll probably go through and touch that up also. But uh, yeah, another thing I like to use is selective color. This is a really cool um, editing feature in Photoshop as well. You can select what color you kind of want to edit at the top, so in this case I have red selected, and you can pick how much of each color you want within that. So you can fine tune things or even just straight up change the color palette if you wanted to. But it seems to work pretty well and it, it doesn't um, it doesn't really like destroy the work that you have. But yeah, so I'm just uh, tweaking little bits here and there to see what I'd prefer, I guess. And uh, I've al already actually edited this file, but I just wanted to show you guys little things here and there that I use. So yeah, at this point I just go through, I do a bunch of editing, I can resize things, I can I just move, move things around, I can see if things look better um, flipped, flipped horizontally, vertically, whatever, and then just go through, get rid of little bits here and there. So now I'll show you how I go about editing my 5x7 prints. I have a template that I made that I put the put the artwork on. I usually just drop in the file and I edit it to size. Sometimes files don't fit perfectly in them, so sometimes I have to cut the edges or I have to kind of smush it vertically or horizontally. That's my cat, sorry. If you need to squish it too much, it ends up kind of warping the artwork, so you usually want to try and avoid that, but sometimes it's okay to crop off a little bit here and there. Usually 5x7s are a lot taller and thinner, as well as the 13x19 prints that I do on my printer. Those ones are much taller and thinner than the 8.5x11s, so a lot of my prints end up um, being cropped a tiny bit one way or the other. But yeah, so here I, I use the rulers and I measured it all out um, exactly to 5x7 and left a very precise amount of space on the borders all around. 
And yeah, this works pretty pretty good for me. Lopis touched these up a couple times for me as well because I think I had it a couple pic pixels off, but now I think it's a pretty, pretty perfect template. And then I just uh, shift alt and duplicate and drag over the, um, the other image and basically do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, I hope I'm explaining this good enough for you guys. Um, but yeah, I currently have a like two computers set up right now. It's a huge pain in the ass, but uh, I have all of my other files on my Windows computer here. So I'm just going through. I'm picking the 5x7 because that's the one I'll show you guys um, printing. And then I open up the software for my printer. This is the software. So it's my image garden. And then I have everything divided in files. So my 5x7s are all in one file so that I only have to search through the one size. And then I make sure that I have it set at the right size of paper that I'm printing. Always print on matte photo paper. Um, you want to print matte because gloss usually is meant for photos, not, um, not artwork. So yeah, I printed off two. I'm not sure why, but I, I did. <laughs> so this is my printer. It's pretty great. It's been it's done a pretty good job and yeah, it can print up to 13 by 19, which is awesome. Here is the paper that I use for my smalls. It's pretty decent paper. Um I'm thinking about upgrading soon. And this isn't for my medium prints, but I'm going to be changing from that paper. I still have not found a good medium paper. But yeah, back to the small paper. It's pretty affordable. I don't use the greatest paper for my smalls because they're like postcard prints basically, but uh, they are still pretty decent. And this is the paper that I use for my larges. It's the Epson watercolor paper, Radiant. And it's really good quality paper. I love it. Um, I might end up upgrading from this one too, but I'm not sure. It has a really nice texture though, like a watercolor paper texture. Yeah, I, I like how it feels. It's not too thick too, and it's not too thin. So uh, that's been a pretty, pretty good paper for me for larges. I've stuck with that one for a long time. And I've stuck with the smalls for a long time as well. I might end up getting different smalls, like maybe thicker paper, but... Yeah, we'll see. And yeah, that's just sort of the texture that the large paper has. So here I am putting the paper in for the small prints. Just making sure everything's good. I usually keep this covered, as you guys have probably seen. So here's the printer. I just pulled it up online so you guys can see. Honestly, it is a bit pricey for a printer. It's definitely pricey for a printer. However, it is a really good investment. And because I wanted to be able to make 13 by 19 size prints, this was what I needed to go for. Um, it's very, it's very good quality for being able to print that size. Normally, if you're printing up to 13 by 19, you have to shell out a lot of money for a printer, so um, yeah, this this has worked really, really well for me. I, I quite like this printer, um, aside from the usual printer things. So now I'm just using the paper cutter here, uh, a little guillotine, I think it's the word. Uh, this is not my first paper cutter. I've had one or two others before this, but this one's been my favorite. It's small enough that I can kind of store it away, but it's also really good quality. I've had it for quite a long time, and the knife is still crazy sharp. It's amazing, and uh, I don't really have to do much measuring because it's got all the lines, but... You can also use a mat like this and an X-Acto knife with a ruler. Um, just want to show you guys that option. And that could work as well, but if you're just starting out and you want something cheap, you can look for something um, something else too. Like you don't have to use the X-Acto 
knife you could use something like this like portable paper trimmer this is the one i used to have and it was kind of annoying because the blade would get dull really fast but uh it served me back when i started and it was it was good enough so Another thing that I use um, for making prints is these clear bags. Um, you can order them online, but I uh, get them from the local art store. It's way cheaper. Um, this will just help protect your prints. Also, I sealed this up and normally I sign things on the back, but I was just like so focused on making the video that I didn't sign it. <laughs> so I'll probably be reopening this, but yeah, so... That just kind of makes sure that your prints are tucked away safe so pretty much as soon as they come out of the printer and they've dried i package them up so yeah here's their online shop the for the clear bags they have so many sizes it's actually ridiculous but if you are in canada i don't know if it's the same elsewhere but in canada it it's very expensive to order them because the cost for <laughs> for shipping is ridiculous um and the customs but yeah see here I, I sign things on the back <laughs> anyways so yeah that's just a couple of the prints that i've made and the medium so yeah uh and then i just display them up on my store here and i'll talk to you guys about stores and stuff in the future so obviously a lot of people who are watching this will be watching it because they want to make their own prints obviously and I understand that not everyone can immediately afford to get a scanner or a printer and honestly it took me a long time to get to a point where I could afford to have all the equipment that I use now um, it wasn't just an immediate thing it was very slow so I want to make a list of options because I tried a bunch of different things before I had this equipment so the first option is to get scans from a third party you could go to a print shop, you could get like fancy scans that are like color corrected and everything. I, I've gotten lots of different scans from lots of different places, uh, anywhere from like 12 bucks to 50 and up. And uh, you can even get like photos taken of really big pieces and that will cost quite a bit, like a couple hundred. But uh, this is like in Canadian. I've gotten okay scans for about like 12 bucks. I put 10 bucks because I'm trying to like keep US currency in mind because most of, most of my viewers are from the States. So it's kind of varied, but you can always start with that for scans. And then you could also get prints from a third party. And that's like all across the board, all sorts of different prices. And I also started off doing that too. Um, I got scans scans and prints done from other places until I could afford to buy my own stuff from the income that I made from those. You could also look for an artist co-op. There is also one in my city that's um, it's good for screen printing. Uh, nothing else but screen printing would also be a great place to start and this place that I went to you basically paid for the paints that you use and that's pretty much it. Um, I think you just get like a membership or something like that. It's like super cheap and you can use all of their equipment. So you can look for stuff like that. I don't know if there's things like that where you can make your own prints aside from screen printing, but screen printing is also um, an option. You can start with one printer or a scanner. You don't need both immediately. Again, that's what I did. I told you guys before I started with a scanner so that I could save all of my um, scans for my original so that when I did get a printer, I could print them all off or I could at least have the scan so I could bring them into a third party printer. Another option is, yeah, just like sell commissions, make originals to save up money um, and also making money from prints that you get made at other places could help you save up for your own printer as well. So there's lots of different ways to go about this. There's no right or wrong way, it's just basically do what you can to get there and you will get there if you're working hard. That's pretty much it. I have some room at the bottom so I'm just gonna put a really cute uh, kawaii um, schoolgirl here at the at the bottom for you. You're welcome click like to subscribe hit the little bell icon if you guys want uh, want to get notifications and everything and um thanks for watching and let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see so yeah take care guys bye